Hi, I'm Francesco Frasinelli. Uh, this is my, uh, I'm going to show some initial, very initial result of my thesis in geoinformatics engineering. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Marco Minghini and Professor uh, Maria Antonia Brovelli. So I, I have a computer science background, so I'm not really a researcher. So every suggestion and critics is very, very welcome in very open source and free software style uh, way to operate. And I'm also a vice president of Polymappers, uh, OpenStreetMap contributor and a free software lover. Well, I, what I would like to do uh, is to try to estimate the quality of OpenStreetMap, of course, uh, because this is one of the many issues why people are not able to use OpenStreetMap in um, their work. Okay, because you need to know the errors and have an idea about accuracy and precision in order to use your data. So there are many different criteria that you can use, special accuracy, uh, complete, temporal completeness, uh, consistency from a semantic point of view, lineage. So we have two different families. The first one is extrinsic, that is the standard way to do things. So basically, I have OpenStreetMap data and I have an authori authoritative sorry, um, information geographical database. So I compare. And when something, when something differs, I assume that the uh, authoritative data is uh, the right one. They say, and I use, can use OpenStreetMap in order to add additional attributes. While the intrinsic approach is a bit more recent, because in some areas we cannot use this intrinsic approach or it's quite limited because uh, in some places we have a very high quality or, uh, of open history map data or we have buildings that uh, don't exist in official cartography. So, with respect to that, I, I would like to focus on temporal accuracy. Still studying the evolution of the database because, because as we've seen before, we have this wonderful file on OpenStreetMap that is the history full file. So we have the whole history of every object and this is very nice. So I, uh, this presentation will be split in three. I try to figure out different ways to approach this geographical uh, time varying <laughs> data. So the very, things, the very first things I did was to develop a web application, so something that could be used also for, uh, from the community. So, this is my web application, open source, it's on GitHub, you can use whatever you, how you prefer. So, I, I probably, this is the second day of the conference, so you started to uh, be a bit, little bit familiar with this plan. So, what do we have? We have um, different criteria, okay, in order to get uh, this point of interest. Those are points, uh, we are showing points, no nodes, so with attributes, just generic nodes with attributes, and we are sorting them, we are showing the last edit. So the blue one are the most recent one, uh, as with respect to last edit, and the red one are the oldest one. This is a very simple approach in order to let the community to explore our data, the data that we have, and also to help the community to understand uh, what are the issues, the possible issues. So as soon as I, publi I published the software, the Italian community, and I show, of course, to the Italian community, I got good, good responses from them because they started to see, oh, this is, our, we have some red dot, let's double check if this data is up to date or not. So we have different criteria, like first edit, of course, it's not very different here, but you can see some changes. So, uh, like, uh, for example, Team Monument over there, it's quite old, was added, it's quite old, the monument, of course, and it's also, uh, it's been added since a long time in OpenStreetMap, compared to the last edit. And then we have uh, uh, revision. It means different version with respect to, to text that's been changed, deleted, uh, or modified, uh, added, deleted, and modified. Uh, and then we have, so we have, uh, as you may see, we have very, most of the points have very few um, revision. Why most of the, why very few points have very high revision? Like, if you can see on the top uh, right corner, we have uh, the this crossing that is, has been modified many, many times. Okay, if I want to see, uh, for example, uh, the best, uh, uh, if I want to see some, 
some details about regarding with this note. I see that he has uh, 25, uh, 21, sorry, um, version. Okay, I see, and I get some basic information. Then I have some links to the OpenStreetMap wiki, and uh, I, I can edit in the ID editor, I can see the history, some details, some additional information. So I'm merging, I'm taking data both from the, uh, let's say, the standard OSM XML, when I, you get the bounded box in your editor, like just, uh, and, and then for every point I'm also doing a <laughs> separate request on the OSM API server in order to get historic information. So this is in real time, I set up a little cache in order not to overload the OSM API servers. Well, we also have contributors. What contributors mean? So contributors means then we are counting unique contributors. Because, for example, I could uh, uh, make some many modifications to the very same node, but maybe, maybe the call is not a high, a good quality for in, uh, a good index for quality. Uh, because uh, we can assume, we could try to assume uh, that if a node is, uh, was modified by different people, maybe we get a more complete uh, uh, tagging. And update frequency. That's basically mean uh, how much a node has been uh, updated. And that's it. So let's say modification over time. Uh, you can also have a look at ways. Okay, so we have a, this base layer of OpenStreetMap tiles, and on top of it, we are using this GeoJSON that acts like a vector tile for it. Um, and that's it. So you can search, you can go on GitHub, you can push, and this is a, a good way to start to have a look at your, your, your place. So, we go back to the presentation. Um, yeah, as I have, a, I have a computer scientist background, <laughs> I will talk a little bit about uh, the technology behind it. So if you are interested, we can talk a little later. Uh, I'm using OSM API, so I'm not using the history file for this uh, specific program, so you can see in real time. And this is a bit strange because OpenStreetMap API are not really meant to, to get the full history of many different elements. So I'm doing some optimization in order to reduce the latency, so taking 100 elements uh, uh, in one time. I'm using HTTP pipe pipelinings, uh, some kind of new technology. The servers is uh, running uh, my little Python program with um, yeah. And I'm, I'm converting it to SQLite, Spatialite, so I can, I'm able to manage the data. Uh, okay, REST is quite common for a Python developer point of view. And then you can also fast deploy in with Docker and, and the image is based on Fedora, so we can have fun with it. <laughs> so then I, I moved to an aggregated analysis. I didn't focus on the different buildings. I tried to create an hexagonal grid. So I'm not taking into account uh, uh, um, change in geometry, like the previous presentation, but I'm mostly I'm focusing on tags. So there is no distinction between different nodes associated to ways uh, or just single point of interest. And deleted nodes are not taken into account. Into account. Well, uh, this is our hexagonal grid for the Milano area. And as I, I used to study here and I, I lived in Milan, um, I tried to interpret this data in order to try to understand if a criteria or an index could be more interesting compared to another one uh, for assessing uh, quality. Uh, or, for example, if, uh, um, if an index could be used as in order to weight our measures. Okay. So for example, this is the simplest one. So nodes uh, per square uh, kilometer, okay? You see we have, it's, uh, we have uh, 500 meter of radius, just to give you an idea. And we, we see a very simple distinction between the center of Milan and the periphery, uh, the, the southern, mostly the southern part. It is not very uh, urban, so you have fields over there. So we can take this into account for our consideration. Well, this is the creation, the average of the creation time. And, and we see basically that uh, the suburbs are going to get mapped um, 
they map them have been mapped more recently. So this is not, uh, this is interesting. It's quite expected. It's not something really strange. And so we can try to also think about that when the, the center of the city get mapped, so people start to map outside because there are many information that are missing. So also we have the last edit, the average. Um, this is a very simple index just to have an idea about what's happening. Let's add it. Uh, update frequency, this is that aggregated one. Um, we have, uh, we can see um, also here that people are, while tears in, in the middle is quite uh, the same, we do not have very uh, significant discrepancies. We have um, the nodes outside that have been updated, but still. So I've started to ask myself if uh, this kind of map could show that Milan is, going, is having a, a good level of completeness, maybe. Um, with version, I've seen something a bit strange, I have to say, because uh, we don't have some big blocks uh, <laughs> with uh, dark color. And I asked myself, uh, what are these parts of Milano? So uh, looking at Milano map, or Los Prince State map, We've seen that maybe there are nodes uh, and streets that are really related with viability. We are building new metro lines in Milano. So you've seen many change. So it's mainly, maybe something that is related to transportation, mostly. Um, and then we have the contributors. The contributors, uh, uh, also the crossing uh, and, and very critical points more than uh, streets. Then we have contributors, total, total number, and that's easier to interpret because we have the center and then we have this, the area cl close to Milano Centrale and the Politecnico, Città Studi, so where polymappers are, etc. <laughs> so it's, it's quite expected. And then we have uh, a dark dot, a dark hexagon, uh, and this is where uh, we do some map time events. So it's in matches. Um, so, with respect to this part, um, what I use? Okay, um, I, um, I use the, um, the Planet History Full, that is around 100 gigabytes of data, and I, I try to use Osmium as Python library in order to extract data and push it on a SQL database, as you might understand. I, now, I'm really a fan of SQL databases in order to, to do this kind of uh, analysis. So SQLite plus Partialite, uh, and this approach work on cities, on cities and also nationwide. I, do this, I did a similar analysis on Italy too, but uh, I don't think that the, the best way to use it on an, a global scale, that's it. And uh, this is why I try many different approach with different databases, because as the critical part in this case is the import of the data, because you cannot, as far as I know, of course, uh, feel free to, to, to block me later. Uh, I don't know if uh, we cannot use PBF databases on the fly. So, but I found that there are ORC databases that are provided for free, that has a PBF conversion. And you can use, for example, I'm trying to use them with Park and Hive, so big data approach for this. Or, and also, we'll try to experiment with PostgreSQL and uh, Citus. Also, in PostgreSQL, you have a foreign data wrapper approach uh, module for trying to access to OpenStreetMap data directly, but still, you don't have indexes in, the, in your database, uh, so it's very, very slow. It's used mostly for import. In this case, on a single thread, we have two minutes for the conversion and one for aggregation and statistics. So it's, it's quite fast for me. And a, um, quite a long SQL queries in order to get these results. That's it. I'm using quite QJS and the plugin MMQJS for the grid. So what about semantic accuracy? Um, let's start to uh, ask ourselves a bit more complex questions. Uh, I would like to know, to have a look at the evolution of our nodes. So what happens from if we have uh, some general trends or not. So I consider the nodes in Milan, as I told you before. And uh, 
top 100 most popular tags in order to have something that is quite significant from a um, statistical point of view. So I try to understand, for example, if uh, there are some tags that are added uh, before other tags, so if there is this kind of evolution. So I'm going to show you a very simple example that is uncontrolled crossing. Uh, okay, we see that in uh, almost 60% of the time we have that uh, highway crossing and crossing uncontrolled, they are added in the very same version of the node, while 41% uh, of the time uh, crossing uncontrolled is added later, in a later uh, version. Still, so it's quite a strong relation, so we could assume, for example, that uh, A after B, so the opposite, so crossing uncontrolled before <laughs> highway crossing, it, it could be our, um, our, an error, for example, that has been fixed. So we can also think that uh, for nodes that have crossing uncontrolled but not highway, an highway crossing tag, uh, this could be an error that could be fixed. In fact, I found four nodes, for example, that have has B uh, but the not tagged as A. Okay, 65% of the node has no uh, crossing tag. Okay, so, so high, uh, highway crossing without crossing. Basically, so this is an idea of completeness because I don't. I found that, for example, highway uh, crossing has no default value. But all these considerations can are, are made without having to uh, look at the wiki. Just looking at the raw data, if we are able to extrapolate something. Um, yeah, so we can say that B is a natural evolution of A. That's that's the main idea behind it. Let's move a little bit further. So. Let's play with three different tags. So A before tag B and B before tag C in different version. So benches, let's talk about benches. Um, 845 nodes with amenity bench, uh, we call A, backrest, backrest tag B and material C. So it's, uh, in Milan it's quite nice, very <laughs> quite straight, because in my opinion, because I, almost in 60% of the case, we have this exact evolution. In different version, we're not talking about the same version. Uh, so really people are mapping before bench and then they add back, back, uh, backrest and then at the very end they add the material. Um, while in 40% of the time we have uh, different orders, so maybe at the same time or maybe just amenity bench and backrest and material in the same version. So we have a very different mix over there. Um, consideration. Um, I remember that, uh, for example, in, during Christmas time, we had the Polymapper Adventure that is, was an initi initiative of Polymappers, where, like an advent calendar, where every day you can uh, do a different task, so to get familiar, to have fami get familiar with OpenStreetMap. And we had uh, a couple of quests related with benches, so maybe this could uh, be affected, but still, 845 are a lot of thanks a lot of benches, so maybe there is something more, or maybe we had a greater impact than expected. Um, there's something interest also, because uh, I after, for most of the nodes, after three, four tags, we reach something like a plateau. So we have this kind of curve, an evolution, uh, and then it stops. So we update tags, etc., but we don't add new tags, except for Wikimedia, Wikidata, um, tags uh, and for natural related tags because uh, they are quite special, like leaf type, uh, trees and so on, they have a lot of tags. So, conclusion. What we have now? We have the web application that you can use just to have a look at and explore your data and have a look at your place and see if it's up to date or not and maybe find some outliers and press on the button in order to edit and see what's happening there. Um, so I tested different approach because this is m maybe the m main technical issue with this kind of analysis. I'm very happy that we see on the previous presentation uh, some proposal in order to standardize our approach to this kind of uh, issues. Uh, especially I found that there are, we don't have many tools and data, um, database schema for uh, treating um, history. So I found on the OSM wiki that we have some old proposal compared to that, uh, but still it's something that has to be developed further. So 
as, as, as state of the map 2018 is for sure a great place to discuss between us. <laughs> and then performance issue because we're dealing with very big databases and many tools don't scale and, and so on. And then, and then I show you some preliminary results that then we can discuss if you like to. Uh, maybe for, um, possible uh, developments for the future. Uh, I would like to uh, add um, some, some tiles uh, for the web application, export as JSON. Ah, just one thing. You can use your apl the application locally without having to use the, the browser. You can just download and use from the common line, as with a common line interface, and it will download a JSON that you can process. Maybe use the OSM planets. Does it make any sense? I will have to convert every day, so probably will not up to date. I will have a very high load on the server, maybe. Uh, so for now, I'm just using OSM APIs. And then probably we cannot do a complete analysis without taking into account that different points of interest, different points, different nodes have different peculiarities. So for example, trash bin, you map it once, and then probably you will not update. Uh, we we'll just delete it if, or move them, but we will not add or change tags for a trash bin. And understanding local trends because, of course, they are relevant, so we can extend to other areas. And we did a paper uh, at, um, for FOS4G uh, related uh, to Dar el Salam area. Semantic analysis: we are not analyzing ways, for example, and we are not. Uh, we should okay uh, correlate with the land user population, and then, as I told you. Uh, every criticism um, and suggestion is welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, three minutes for questions. Please raise your hand and then we'll bring the mic to you. Hi, thanks for your interesting talk about your research. I actually have two questions. So, yeah. first of all, do you plan to do any correlations, for example, on what you saw, uh, the location between communities and the number of edits? And the second question is, uh, how do you tie in into existing research? Because I know there's already quite a lot of research on OSM quality and the measures that you use, so I think that's uh, something to think about. Yeah, so it's thank you. <laughs> If I understood correctly your first point, the first question, uh, there are many different uh, ways to try to analyze. There are many different metrics. So uh, can we can have contributors, we can contributors, number of edits. And maybe, as we've seen in the previous presentation, we could also take in con into consideration the, the history of the single contributor, because one is more experienced than the other, but it's something that we really have to, to Go deeper. This is our preliminary results. And with respect to the um, existing result and research in this field, um, I, will have, I will have to say that uh, while we have some research and very interesting research and that uh, I read, I'm still reading and explore because there are a lot of very cool references, I have to say. So I, I consider myself a newcomer of this area. So <laughs> please forgive myself if I make some mistakes or, or if I don't know the whole literature about it. Um, I will say that uh, the main idea in this case is to have an intrinsic approach, okay, with, for temporal analysis, that is the, main, the second feature, and the third one is to not have a look at uh, uh, a priori knowledge from Wiki, and uh, so just look at the raw data and the devolution of the data from a temporal stand standpoint. So there are some, there are some research search that are similar, and we're, I will decide uh, which, <laughs> this is why I, 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 do, I did three different, let's say, exploration in this field. And then according to the literature, I will try to go deep on one side and then try to cover something a bit uh, different uh, for my final thesis. And I will try to publish as many things as possible as open source, free and set in order to give back to the community because I'm really, I really think that I'm, um, uh, I got so many things from the OSM and open source community, so I need to give people back <laughs> and share because that's the main uh, 
reason. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Francesca. That's a very loud microphone. The, the visualization of uh, the history is a real step forward. The two presentations we've seen, something I, I might suggest with the tagging scheme is to not completely ignore looking at the, the tagging from the, the, the wiki because that might help you. I think one of the, the academic questions that is very interesting in, in the work you've done there is if, if a node has not been edited in 10 years, one of the ways we can find out why that might possibly be I yeah. is by looking at the wiki. So for the statue out at the front of the piazza, statues don't really change very much. So it's not surprising that that would not be edited. But the, the crossing, so it, I, I think if, uh, may maybe this is a step after your PhD, but that you, this work could generate a, a list of tasks that would suggest to people what could yeah. be updated. But it would need to look at the tagging, I think, so that mm. we don't suggest that we update every statue in, in Milan unless there is yeah. some major, major reason for that. But traffic crossings are an obvious thing, building use, etc. cetera. So uh, the visualization is fantastic, but I, th I think a really good knowledge output would be a, a set of tasks that mappers then could actually yeah. uh, somehow connect to and actually uh, uh, do in, in their spare time. I totally agree with you. With respect to the wiki, with respect to the wiki, let's say that in order to start to deal with the data, uh, if you look at the wiki, you have many differences. So I would like to see at the beginning something like, okay, I've seen that um, the notes that are monuments, okay, without n technically knowing, knowing uh, what a monument is because the machine doesn't know it and I didn't put a preset. Let's see if the analysis, uh, if we are able to do produce an analysis that sees that the, um, the monument don't change too much. So we are going to suggest uh, that, for example, it's fine to have a monument that has been updated 10 years ago. That's, that's it. Without, for example, saying manually, that was the idea, OK, let's set a timeline, up, up, uh, frequency update time or something like this for monuments statically. Yeah, if I can just add, you know that different types of points of interest, of course, have different, uh, may, may change or may not. So this is why Francesco said this was just the first step. The second step would be, of course, to categorize points. Yeah. Some will or may continue to evolve, some will not. Like the building numbers, for instance, they may not evolve anymore. So maybe the, the maximum quality can be reached just after the first version. Uh, and the second thing about the wiki is that, as, as you know, because we did something together, sometimes the wiki is not followed, even in tagging. So uh, at the first approximation, we decided not to look at the wiki, not to look at the suggested tags to be used in combination. And then maybe a second one can be, again, to see if the evolution reflects the wiki. But sometimes it will not. We already know. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.